Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. It's my job to teach Squarespacers around the globe how to customize their websites with code, but there are five mistakes that I made a lot when I first got started with code, and I wanna make sure that you know what they are so you can avoid them. Let's go ahead and hop into my demo site and I'll show you the five most common CSS mistakes that beginners make and how to fix them. You ready? Let's do this. So here we are in my demo site, and I'm gonna hop into the custom CSS panel so we can start working with some code and you can see just how easy it is to make these common mistakes. The first one is that your code might not be important enough. Here I have a small button on my site and I wanna change the background color of it. This code says SQS block button element small background pink. It's the right code, but nothing's happening. As soon as I add exclamation point important to the end of my code, the browser will prioritize this code over anything else it sees. So if you make a custom CSS change and you know the selectors right and the properties right and the values right and nothing's happening, make sure the browser knows that your code is important by adding exclamation point important. Now the second super common CSS mistake is using the wrong selector. If I wanna change a button, let's say I remove the word small and I just say SQS block button element, let's make the background pink. This button is not going to change. This button is actually associated with the image. Let's hop into edit mode really quick and I'll show you here. This is an image block with the button enabled. So instead of calling this a block button element, which will work for the other buttons on my site, I need to call this an image button. And even that isn't enough. That will take up the whole block for the button. So I also have to say A, the active link in an image button. That's the correct selector for this specific button. Now I do have a gigantic PDF of selectors for Squarespace at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. So if you're unsure about the selector, check out the selector list there. But I do try to mention the specific selectors in all of my tutorials. So make sure you're using the correct selector for what you're trying to change. That A trick is a really interesting one here for images, isn't it? Image button just isn't gonna do it active link associated with the image button does. So make sure you're using the correct selector. Now on to mistake number three. You might have some extra characters or the wrong ones. Let's go back to that button that we had before, the small button right here. If we say SQS block button element dash dash small background pink important, nothing's changing. That's because these two dashes right here in my code, these two right here are not the correct dashes. Those are a different symbol. If I change those to the correct dashes, my button will update. So double check your characters. When you copy and paste code out of a blog post or especially out of a PDF, important dashes like this will be changed to a different character. Sometimes extra spaces will be added or removed because the PDF program thinks that it's formatting. Be super duper careful about any extra characters or incorrect ones. Now the fourth mistake is closing your media query. Let's say I wanted to change the H1 on small screens to be a bigger size and I still want those buttons to be pink. Now if I go to the desktop version of my site, that pink button option has gone away. It's only visible on mobile and that's because I didn't close my media query. What I need to do is have two curly brackets at the end of this. You'll notice this part of the code is nested between this bracket and this bracket. Let me go ahead and make this code full screen for you to show you what I mean. We've got at media only screen and max width 640 PX. And then this parenthesis says, okay, here's all the code you need to do at this spot. If I don't close that extra parentheses, the browser will only apply any code after that to that smaller screen size. So make sure you close your media query. Now, last but not least, you didn't tell the browser it was a style code. If we're adding code in page header code injection or using a code block to change an individual blog post or product, we have to tell the browser it's a style code because you can have more than one type of code using that feature. Let's hop into edit mode and change the color of these buttons using a code block. Now, if I grab the code that we've been working with right here and I say, okay, Squarespace, I'm going to add a block of code Notice I've added it and nothing happens. That's because I can have HTML here, JavaScript, CSS, plain text. I need to tell the browser, hey, this is CSS. So I have to say style, then paste the code, and then close the bracket. 
Now this button is going to change to this background color of red that we created. But again, I have to have this bracket that says style, and then I have to close that bracket, just like I did with the media query. It's the only way to let the browser know we're making a style change. You have to do this for a code block and for page header code injection. When you're adding code to your custom CSS panel over here, it already knows it's a style code. That's the only type of code that we paste there, so you don't need those brackets. But if you're using a code block or page header code injection, don't forget to tell the browser this is a style code. Alrighty, that's it for this quick rundown of those top five mistakes that I see a lot of beginners make when they start creating code for Squarespace. And I know because I've made every single one of them myself. I hope that you found this information helpful. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like and a comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel because I would love to teach you how to customize something about Squarespace every single week. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I took all of my pro tips and custom codes specifically for Squarespace and put them into one gigantic PDF. Available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.